All right, for that function, that cubic, we're going to use our calculator to figure out the relative extreme and any possible zeros. And we'll write down all that information and sketch it a graph. So what I need you to do is, what we're going to do is we're going to go into y equals. Now I have a function in there that I don't need anymore, so I'm going to clear that out. And then I'm going to type in x cubed minus 2x squared. Yada, yada, to get that cube in there, you can use the raise to button. And make sure on your screen that's all you have. If you have other functions that you don't want anymore, then make, uh, you, what you can do is you can highlight the equal sign. And I shouldn't say you don't want anymore. Maybe you want to keep them, but you don't want to delete them. You would highlight the equal sign and hit enter, and that's what turns them off, so it just makes it a regular equal sign. But if you hit enter again, it turns it back on. Uh, right here. Oh, right there. You have to hit X and then the square button. All right. So just to make sure everyone's on the same page, let's go to Zoom and then do Zoom Standard number six. Zoom Standard makes the window negative 10 by 10. This is always a good place to start unless you know what your function is going to look like before you plug it in. And hit enter. Boop. Now that we have an idea about our function, all we really care about is this little portion right in here, because that's where our intercepts are at and that's where our relative extrema. So let's go back to our window and change our window. Let's make the, uh, so let's hit the window button. We'll make the x go from, let's do negative 3, 3 all around. That sounds good. Negative 3, 3. Let's find the relative extrema first. So notice right about here, we have a relative max. And right down here, we have a relative min. Is that okay? We're going to find one at a time. To find your extrema, you go to second, calc. And notice number four there, we'll start with that one, is maximum. You want to hit enter on maximum. And the calculator is going to ask you for three things. The first thing is left bound. What left bound means is, well, basically what you're going to do is you're going to be making this open interval that surrounds your maximum and minimum. So left bound means uh, go to the left of the maximum. So basically right where my cursor is is totally fine. But go to the left of the maximum and hit enter. Oh. thought I hit enter. Oh, uh, it's not letting me hit enter. How about now? There you go. Now it's sort of hard to see when you hit enter, two things happen. It puts a black arrow facing to the right. And what that black arrow means is it's not going to look anywhere to the left of that arrow for the maximum. And then the question at changes to right bound. So now you want to go right of the hill. You hit for the left bound, go to the left of the hill and hit enter. And now we're going to go to the right. So now we're going to go to the right of the hill. Now, as far as how far right you want to go, uh, just make sure you're clearly not on top of it. But also at the same time, make sure you're not picking anything over here because that's above the maximum. And it'll confuse the calculator. It'll make it sad. So for the right bound, make sure you're to the right of the hill and hit enter. So notice it makes another black arrow. So what's going to happen is it's only going to look in between these two values for the maximum. And then the third thing it asks is guess. The only purpose of the guess is if you enclose two maximums, you want to say, I want this one specifically. But we only have one there. So if you want, you can hit enter right here. Or if you're a purist, you can put your cursor on top of the maximum and hit enter. Depending on the problem, it may take a while for it to find the maximum. This was not that bad. Notice the maximum occurs at uh, what appears to be one third comma 1.15 rounded. The, 
Right, and that's the thing. So depending on where your guess is at, your window, yada yada, will affect like the last few numbers there. And sometimes your calculator could lie to you. Like if the value is supposed to be one, it might say point nine 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 nine. So uh, be smarter than your calculator. It's basically what I'm telling you. All right, so we have a relative maximum at one third comma one point one five approximately. Is that okay? All right, so we're going to do the same thing for a minimum. We're going to go to second calc. And this time we're going to select minimum. And it asks you the same thing, left bound, right bound. What is the airspeed velocity of unladed swallow? Exactly. So go to the left of the minimum. So right about there is good. Hit enter. Go to the right of the minimum. Right there is good. Hit enter. So it's only going to look between those two black arrows. And for the guess, if you want to put your cursor on the minimum approximately and hit enter. And notice our calculator is lying to us. It really should be one comma one. You may have gotten one comma one on your calculator. Lies are lies. All right, the last up is the zero. If you go to second calc, second option there is zero. Remember that's fancy talk for your x-intercept. If we hit enter, we're asked the exact same three questions, left bound, right bound, guess. So our zero is approximately right here. So what we're going to have to do is we need to go to the left of where it crosses, to the right of where it crosses, and then hit enter on where it crosses. So the left of where it crosses for this picture happens to be below the x-axis. So you just put one space under where it is? Yeah, as long as you're clearly under it. You can tell that you're under it because notice here you're, you sh should see your y is negative. So left bound, hit enter. Now it's asked for a right bound, go above the x-axis for this example. Hit enter. So it's only going to be looking between those two x values there. And guess, get close to it, hit enter. It's approximately negative 0.47 if we round. So sadly, we only have three points, but since we've been staring at the graph for this long, we sort of know what the graph looks like. So let's graph those three points. What was the relative max again? One third comma. Was that one five? Did anyone write it down? No one wrote it down. Relative minimum. And our zero was on comma zero. Good. So let's plot those. So one third, 1.15, that looks good. One, one, oh, squishy graph. And then negative, that looks good there. Oh, we could also find an all uh, y-intercept. We can do that right now. Where's the y-intercept? Oh, I want orange. How do you find a y-intercept? Y-intercept is a point where it crosses the y-axis. All points on the y-axis have an x-coordinate of zero. So if you put in zero in for all the x's in the function, what do you get? One. All right, so just connect the points. Again, at this level, we don't know enough information how to do this by hand without a calculator. <laughs> Oh, oh, I messed that up. I zigged when I should have zagged. There we go. It should go up from there. That's better. Perfect. So we'll learn how to do this by hand next class.